It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Welcome to The Sam LaSant Show, folks. Uh, remember uh, the vote in November, it's very, it's, this is a critical year, as you all know. Uh, the interesting thing, uh, my friends, is to learn about what's happening in our political system. Uh, so we're starting uh, educating you as to who's in the office, who's, what they've done and what they've contributed and are they living up to what they said they were going to do when they ran for office. Today, uh, no stranger to the 116th district, uh, believe me, no stranger whatsoever, Dane Wacho joins me. He is our state representative and uh, Dane, how are you? I'm doing very good. Thank you very much for having me on. Before I get into the, the, the zillion things that you've done here, okay, I was, I've, I've interviewed over 6,000 people. All right, 6,000 shows. And uh, I've interviewed a lot of people who ran for office, a lot of authors, et cetera, and a lot of great people and a lot of phonies. Most of the phonies were the politicians, okay? And I really have to congratulate you. And I'm not endorsing you or anything, but I have to congratulate you because, Dane, what you've done, you've set a course as to what you were going to do for your constituents. And you lived up to that. All right, and, and we'll discuss a zillion things that you've done, okay? But not only that, you know, I always talk about people who have substance in life, okay? And I pray for everybody. Uh, Democrats, Republicans, you name it, doesn't make any difference to me. We're all human and we're trying to survive in this country. But you know, your, your army experience, where you're stationed in Korea in Korean de demilitarized zone, you study criminal justice, you work with an at-risk youth at the correctional service, but most of all, you guard it, you, you were one of the FBI uh, guarding um, Saddam Hussein. That must have been an experience in itself. Yeah. So I was selected by the FBI yeah, with um, my unit uh, to guard high value detainee Saddam Hussein during his first year of captivity. It was a very unique mission, a mission I've never done like anything like that remotely in my entire life. But uh, I was uh, honored to be selected by the FBI to be selected for that mission and to make sure that um, he received the punishment that he so deserved. Yeah, did you did you get a chance to see him and, and meet him? And, Actually, yeah, we, we, we're right next to each other his uh, the whole time during his first year of captivity, uh, side by side, yes. Wow, that must have been an interesting experience. It was different. What was his demeanor like? Uh, depending on what type of day he was having, if he was having a day where, um, you know, he was not allowed to move around a lot, then he would be his dictator self. Uh, uh -huh. Or if he was instructed to do certain things that had to be done, uh, that's when you would see his demeanor change. And uh, he liked to, he was a man that liked to be in power. Were you nervous? No. No, you weren't. No, no. You just did your job. Yes, like yes. you're doing here at the 160 district. Well, thank district. you. Yeah. Thank you. No, I, I mean this sincerely. I, I, I really respect. Uh, I've, like I said, so many people come on and they say we're going to do this, and they do, and all of a sudden they never done anything in their lives publicly, and then all of a sudden they're on this committee, they're working with kids, they're doing this, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and that's good. But your substance is the thing that counts. With that being said, you know uh, this is your ending your first term, and you're looking to be. A, uh, continue on. Some of the things that you've worked with. Now, well, you're on certain committees. Then. Yes. Uh, what yes, committees uh, are you on? I love my committees. I am on Veterans Affairs Emergency Preparedness. Uh, that is, uh, that's a great committee. Children and youth, my background working with adjudicated youth. Uh, so I bring an expertise into that um, fi um, area as well. So that's another area that I really enjoy being on and offering my input. Um, the third one is local government. You know I was uh, a mayor of McAdoo for eight years and that uh, I have a lot of interest in that uh, local government committee uh, just as well. And finally, um, Sam, as you know, my, I work for Hazleton Area School District for just under, just right out of a decade, and I serve on the education committee for the House of Representatives. That's a, um, 
a very good committee, one of the best committees there. They're all great committees, but I always say I w I'm so honored to be serving on education, veterans affairs, children and youth, and local government. Okay, so when people hear that you're on these committees, okay, I understand because as the chairman of the college, I had different committees and, and there's a lot of interworkings that are done. What, when you're talking about, let's go let's to the local government committee, okay, what do you discuss and what, what, why is it important? Okay, that's where the foundation of government starts locally. And when a community leader, you might have a, a mayor, a council member will come to the office and say, hey, I, I have an idea about potential legislation that I think would be beneficial right here at home in your district. You would hear that concern and then you would take it out and try to work towards correcting whatever issue it might, might be uh, for that local government, but overall the entire state. So uh, local government, we hear so many things from you know statewide local ordinances that they have. How could we be more help to say Hazleton City on, on a state level um, by changing potential legislation? So there's inner workings here, and, and if they, so each district, I guess, has their own concerns. In their Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Each different district is so different. We hear I, I hear so many things that maybe might affect the Lehigh Valley that we don't have yeah, here in right. Hazleton area. Yeah. So uh, you really, when I put my hat on in each committee, I say, how will this affect my district back home? Yeah. And, and then I'll take it from there and then, okay, how is this gonna benefit the Commonwealth? Okay, so in, in working uh, what you think, I mean, you get input from, from the local government. Okay, Dane, we need this, we're having trouble here, et cetera, et cetera, and you bring that to the table. Now what happens is you have other people on that committee, okay? Do they have to vote, uh, you know, if you want to bring something as a bill up, you know, you need to have bipartisan or, or your colleagues sure. to support you. So depending on who has the majority at that time controls who has majority in each committee. So let's just say a constituent of, of mine comes to me uh, within our district and says, you know, Dane, I have this issue going on in the community. I think we need to revisit and maybe amend a certain law in local government. I'll say, okay, we'll sit down, we'll meet, we'll go over the details. I'll take it to my committee. If it requires drafting legislation, which I got to say, you know, in order to correct things, you always don't have to change leg legislation. Maybe it's simply a phone call and putting two entities together to try to correct a problem. But if it does take that extra step into crafting legislation, you'll craft the legislation and then present it. So when you present it, then it's up to that chairman to move it forward for a vote in that committee. We're talking about local government. It would be up to that chairman to move that for a vote. So where does that lead you to? Building relationships. Exactly. You talked about yeah. it doesn't matter what party you are, and I truly, truly believe that. It's building relationships, and what's, in a, what's the most important thing in a relationship? And I say the one word I say is compromise. Yeah. And if you could compromise with my colleagues across the aisle, which I've been very successful doing so, um, you'll get your product to where it needs to be if it's a good piece of legislation. And I think that's so very important is, is, is working with the, uh, the committee because here again, the chairman, uh, whatever party it is, uh, I don't see why they would object to you trying to help your local government on, okay? Right. There's no nothing political there other than for the good of the people. Am right. I correct in saying that? You are very correct, yeah. With that being said, there are thousands, pe thousands of pieces of legislation that were drafted and presented, and we only have maybe, I did not look to be accurate, but maybe 60 bills that's been um, moved in and moved on to like the Senate area. Uh, there, there could be more, uh, but you know, to get out of committee and to, to move along, especially in that area, you, you don't have the thousands that were crafted. So you really got to work hard, build those relationships and compromise where you can compromise. What is the average timetable from when you uh, initiate a, uh, this, when you're bringing something up for a bill? 
you've certainly done your homework. So you have all of the answers there that's involved with that bill. Then you present it to your committee, and then the chairman decides whether we bring it to the, um, to the legislative group, correct? Sure. What yeah. is the average timetable from start to finish? It could be years. It could be different multiple legislative set, uh, sessions. It could be months. For instance, I, my very first bill that was signed into the law, that signed into law by Governor Shapiro, uh, we had that done and completed within 11 months. And what was uh, that? That was the Veterans uh, EM Emergency Management. So let's talk about uh, a military uh, woman, a man coming out of the military that has a background as a first responder. When they get out of the military here in the Commonwealth, they were not recognizing their service and their training they had in the armed forces. And that was disheartening because A, uh, we're lacking first responders here in the Commonwealth. Uh, B, we should be helping our vets uh, coming out of the military and transitioning within those fields and actually any field. So uh, that idea was brought to me, and from there I um, created this and moved it along, made compromises along the way, and uh, helped out other legislators where what I What were the key things in that bill? That key thing was a soldier gets out of the military. They are certified as a EMT. Uh, they come to the Commonwealth, um, they say to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, here's my training, here's my background, uh, Department of Health will check the box and say, you know, you did, you met all the qualifications for the being an EMT stamp, you're certified. So you don't have to go through all those um, months of training over again. Yeah, and it's interesting, that the reason why I'm, I'm questioning or asking those questions is because the average person doesn't really know all of the details that are involved in putting together a bill and making it happen. So there's factors that I looked at when I've seen when I was chairman and I had my committees, is the fact is what is the experience of the person such as you, what do you bring to the table, and how do you be able to, how you can manage that, all right, and make it work. That comes with your background that you have, which is an excellent background, and thank you so much for what you went through your service. But when you look at, you know, who are we putting into office today, that's the thing that always concerns me as to, I don't care who they are, is do they have the qualifications to do exactly what you are doing? Thank you. Do you find that with your fellow colleagues? I mean, I'm sure there's people there that were are popular people and they voted them because, oh, LaSant, everyone knows LaSant, let's vote for him. And maybe LaSant knows nothing about that. I'm sure the state of House and the Senate, not full of them, but there are some people like that. And that's where you start scratching your head because sometimes when you don't, when you don't have that person who has that knowledge, it's, you gotta take, you gotta teach them, you gotta compromise. Mm -hmm. am, I, am I correct in saying Yeah, that? you're 100% right. And at the end of the day, I believe the most effective and important piece of being a legislator is constituent services. Uh, serving those people, serving, serving our constituents and uh, the office, um, I call them my colleagues because that's what they are. Uh, we have such a great team in our district that allows me to be successful to do what I do. It's, it's, it's interesting because you have to deal with people and you certainly have been very visible, that's for sure. Uh, you're in the paper, you're on, you know, on with us a lot of times and, and we, you know, it's great because this is the local facility is to be able to explain what's going on. Um, now, I'm talking to Dane Watcho, my friends. He is a state representative of the 116th district. Uh, put uh, a lot of work in, a lot of effort in a lot of bills here. We're going to come back, talk about the seniors, talk about a lot of things that are important to us. Elections affect our lives. We are seeing that every day, how elections affect our lives. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the Sam LaSanne Show, folks. And once again, thank you for making the Sam LaSanne Show the number one talk show in Northeastern Pennsylvania. That comes from the scientific poll from the Susquehanna Polling and Research. They were voted the number one research company in the United States. Uh, my guest today is the 116th legislative, from the 116th legislative district, Dane Watrell. Uh, certainly been a busy person uh, the last two years. 
some of the things that you worked on and were able to help. Uh, let's talk about property tax rent releases. Yeah, the property tax uh, rent rebates, uh, that was the income guidelines. We heard so many people come in um, from the past, uh, I know when I took office, that they were not meeting the qualifications um, because their income was right at that threshold. We voted on legislation that increased that guideline, therefore now we have so many more Pennsylvanians qualified for these rent rebates, um, you know, rebates in general for disabled people and um, senior citizens. So there's a limit that they uh, have to make? Yes, they, and I always say if anything's in question, call the office, come in and see us. We could, it, everything's a case by case, depending on your, your income source and so on and so forth. So those income guidelines drastically increased. I hope so. Yes. Because if it was me, they'd get it automatically. Right. Okay, yeah. they've worked all their lives for it. You know, now they have to go through these hurdles, you know, and you have to pay this. And some people lose by, because they made $50 more, $100 more. It's, it's just nonsense. They earn it, give it to them. I don't care if you're a millionaire, poor, whatever, you just get, that's my opinion, okay? You had a hearing on personal income tax reduction. Yeah, back in June, uh, Sammy, I have, I have to tell you, it was such a great hearing. We had a senior citizen testify, and then we had a working mother, and she had, uh, uh, three children and one on the way, I believe, uh, testify on personal income tax of how it would affect her and her family. And the testimony she gave was absolutely amazing. The plan was to reduce, and it's a bill out there, I co-sponsored this bill, is to reduce the earned income down to just about a percent, okay, to help the working class um, middle class uh, people here in the Commonwealth and give, put money back in their pocket. Uh, so that bill has been introduced. We took testimony from her. Then we took testimony from a senior citizen. And when I heard that testimony, it, it, it hurt my heart because she told a story of a friend of hers who had to make a decision between food and medication. And I was at a loss for words. That should not, ha we're in America, that should not happen. So uh, how do you help senior citizens? They don't, they don't have the PIT tax, um, they're not paying it because they're retired. So to eliminate um, and put some money back in their pockets, the idea was to eliminate the gross, um, uh, gross, utility tax. And the gross utility tax, we all know, we all pay utility taxes. Whether whatever electric company you have, you're paying it. So the plan was to eliminate that and put the money back in their pockets so they could afford their medications that they need every month. So with that being said, um, I'm hoping that, I'm hopeful that the, um, the chairman will go ahead and move that and hopefully put put uh, more money back in Pennsylvanians' pockets. Well, you, you, you said a story that, you know, I'm sure when you're at the grocery store and or wherever you're at and you get people that come up and tell you the stories, that my wife and I get that all the time, no matter where we're at. On Boyer's uh, supermarket and, and you have people, you know, who are just, Mr. Lassant, you know, I have to decide whether I have this or this for medication, et cetera, et cetera. And you say to yourself, here's a person that worked all their lives, never asked for anything. The government didn't give them things. Because it, it just breaks your heart, Dane. I can imagine how you it's, felt. Yeah, okay. it, it's, it's horrible. You, you uh, I'm gonna say bingo, you hit the nail right on top of the head when you said about being in grocery stores. People cannot afford it anymore. We're at a, we're at a point in this world where we need to assist. I don't care if it's on the state level or a federal level. We need to help where we could help. And I believe these two things you just um, brought up are very two important issues as a starting point. Well, I, I, it's, it's, it's just, just sickening to me, it's just sickening. You have state grants, okay, uh, that, yeah. which, what, what are some? So yeah, some multi-millions dollars, the good Senator, uh, Senator Orgel and I brought back to the 116th district, ranging from a variety of things from infrastructure, roads, um, sewer, water projects, 
um, vehicles for municipalities so they could plow. Um, we brought back so much money and being a freshman legislator, I, I sat there and I scratched my head the first month and said, okay, how do I get these grants back to my district? And that was a priority of mine. So um, I'm very happy to announce uh, we're well over 10 Well, you did an dollars. excellent job Thank with you. it, that's for sure. Thank you. Uh, services in office, what's... Uh... Yeah, as I was saying earlier, uh, constituent services are one of the main things that we do. When I say, when anybody has an idea or a thought of a state issue and they're having a problem, it could be driver's licenses, it could be utility issues, um, it could be you know any type of utility issues, it could be um, uh, insurance issue, anything you think that uh, is state related, that's where we could help. Come in, see me, give me a call, and let's see if we just could help. Um, you need help with anything state related. And you know what I like about your office too, is the fact that when someone calls, all right, and I know this for a fact, and they have a concern, maybe you cannot handle that, but you direct them in an area where they can be handled. That's right. Yep. And that's, that, that's, well, we can't help you. Boom, no, it's, well, let me, let me say this. If in here's a number you can call, here's the agency, et cetera, et cetera, and if you're having any concerns, get back to us and we'll help you with that. That's, that's right. what your office is doing. Thank okay. you. Thank, I, I appreciate you acknowledging that because uh, that's what they do yeah. and we're here to serve. Uh, moving on, we have unclaimed property. What do you got for me? Any oh, cameras? Any huge, uh, yes. Any, um, <laughs> sticks I could use here? Unclaimed <laughs> property. I got to tell you what, this is one thing that I, I'm asking our constituents here in 116th District and clear across Pennsylvania actually. Call the office because you might have property out there, money, it's something that might belong to you. Uh, there is, I, there's colleagues of mine that called, um, that, that called me that said, oh my gosh, they, I just helped a constituent out on claim property that they had you know, a death benefit that never was claimed from somebody and we got the family you know, a couple thousand dollars. That's not always the case. Yeah, but you know, it might be 10 bucks here and there, but gonna, yeah. a couple bucks could, could um, be coming your way. So unclaimed property is a very important issue. Please call the office, it's super important. Yellow dot program emergency care following a car accident. What's that? Yeah, that's a great thing, uh, especially for older residents uh, um, or Pennsylvanians. Another thing is somebody with a medical condition. It's a yellow dot program Pennsylvania has, and we have it in our office. Come, come by once again and see me. It's a yellow dot that, it's a sticker, it goes on the back rear windshield, driver's side of your window. God forbid if you are in an accident, okay, and you're unable to communicate, you're stuck in a vehicle and passed out, whatever the case may be, you have a photo identification in your glove box with a list of the things you might need help with, um, some treatment, medications you're on, or, or whatever the case may wow, be. Wow, that's fantastic. And then that emergency responder knows to get in that glove compartment, get what needs to be read, read, and treat you appropriately. Wow. Very good program. We had so many constituents that, that's come in and, and that's ask excellent. for the yellow dot Take program. advantage of it, my friends. Now, you know, events coming up, August 20th. Uh, you have a hosting a license plate event, a parking lot of the Hazel Township Municipal Building. What's yeah, the, that? That, that's a great event. Um, this is the second one we're hosting, the good senator and myself. Uh, if your license plate is peeling, if it's, you can't read it anymore, come see us. We'll have a, a trooper there. They're going to review it, do your paperwork, and get you a new license plate uh, in the mail ASAP. Now, that's 10 to 1. Then after that, same day, 5 to 6, I thought you were hosting an ice cream program. <laughs> yeah, it's an ice cream social. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and conversation yeah. in the Ringtown Area Senior Center, right? Yeah, yeah, so that's yeah. A, a town hall meeting. Uh, we encourage people to come, voice your concerns. We like to do them. I know I personally like to do them. Uh, via telephone and in person. Yeah. You're Not, certainly doing a zillion of them. That's I do sure. a lot of them, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. American Legion representative comes to the office to help with veteran affairs, correct? Yes, super important to me, obviously. Um, our veterans affairs was coming once a month. Now he's coming, I believe it's like once every three weeks, uh, just because of the amount of veterans and the families. Uh, a spouse, maybe their husband, wife passed away that was a veteran. Um, they could be entitled to some benefits. If you are, I encourage you, please call my office. 
let's sit down with that service officer from the American Legion who comes and let's see if you have any benefits that um, we could get you. Now, all of these things are, are great, but this one here I think is absolutely super great. On September 10th, uh, Senior Scam Seminar at the Greater General Era Senior Center. My friends, you want to get to that one because there's so much scamming going on. I'll have a, a Trooper Ostrowski on again, and you talk about that. That's going to be a, a, a that's a very important. Yes, this is together. the second scam seminar I'm doing, and that <laughs> seminar, there's so much information that I learned yeah. uh, from it, from the simple thing of a credit card. You know, if you have a tap, tap that thing. Do not stick it in the slot there. Yeah, so super important. Please get to that uh, scam seminar. We learn, people could learn so much from it. Then, of course, you got the big event up here at the Laurel Mall, September 19, the Senior Expo. I think that's great. There's yeah. a lot of things you have going there. So many services out there for yeah. seniors. And yeah. Seniors and veterans were one of my top priorities this legislative session, and we accomplished a lot. And it, it wasn't all day in Watro. This was all the staff and my colleagues that I work with that we got a lot of good stuff accomplished. It's a team effort. Everything's always a team effort. Nobody could do it by himself. Well, you know, Dane, I love shows like this. You know why I love them? Because you're, you, you're explaining what you've done and what you've accomplished, and that's what you said you were going to do, and then you did then some, you know. And like I said, I'm not endorsing anyone, but I got to tell you, you're one of the few uh, politicians that said you're going to do things and you did them and you follow up with them, and I say congratulations to Thank you for you. that, really. Thank you, I appreciate uh, it. Dane Watcho, 116th uh, Legislative District uh, in the state of Pennsylvania. <clears throat> Excuse me, you know it, my friends. You know it every day, you're seeing what's going on in this country, you see what's happening. Put people in there that are qualified to do the job that we deserve. We'll see you next time. <laughs>